All right, welcome back to the show. We're cooking ribs for you today. We're cooking on an offset and we're cooking hot and fast today. We're gonna show you how to get this done, seasoned up and cook them hot and cook them fast. Stick around, don't go anywhere. So we're using spare ribs today for this recipe. And like I said, we were going on the offset smoker. Now, a lot of you guys have never seen me do a, a rack of ribs on an offset cooker uh, for a couple of reasons. I had to move some cookers around on the patio, that's number one. And number two, I like my ribs cooked direct heat. But today, we're showing you how to do them indirect. We're gonna start with some of this fat right here, and we're just gonna get some of this off. Now, on a direct cooker, you don't have to really get any of this off. But I am gonna get just a little bit of this off, and on the ends, I'm gonna leave it on. But I'm gonna get some of this out because the only thing it's going to do is dirty up your cooker. It's going to get your cooker greasy and it's not going to render out. All right, so we'll leave it like that. This rib is not too fatty and there's some fat up under here. So just under this little bone right here, we're going to just get in here and get some of that fat right up out of here. Just like that. All off to the side we go. Now, that's it. I'm not gonna do any more to these. I'm not gonna trim them. There's a little bit of fat here, we're gonna leave that on, and that's it. So that's one rack. And now we're gonna do this rack. Now there's a little bit of fat on here, up under this plate here. And we're going to lift this up and we're going to start to trim a little bit of that off. See, when you're cooking on a cooker where it's indirect, with an offset firebox, which we're firing up today, it's not going to render all of this down so quickly. So when I shop for ribs and I'm using an offset, I buy my ribs never in a package. I like to see them out by the butcher and I can pick out my own rib. Where, if I'm cooking direct, and I buy them in a big package, and there might be some fat on there, I'm gonna cook it off anyway. But I can't do that with uh, an indirect. I have to hand pick them. And they're usually more expensive when you do that. All right, so I've already picked these out nice and cleaned up. They weren't butcher cleaned up, but they were cleaned up. Now this piece of fat that's hanging out right here, I'm just gonna cut it off. And that's that. Now we're ready to start seasoning. So let's get these back on the tray. I'm gonna get this fat over here, off to the side we go with that. I'm gonna put this rack of ribs over here for now. And we're gonna start seasoning our meats. Now over here I have black pepper and some onion powder. And that's the uh, 30 course and just plain onion powder. Now, granulate it. We're not adding any salt to this dish. And on the offsets, I don't use salt because it sucks the moisture out of the meat. I have white distilled vinegar, and the first thing we're gonna do is just put our hands in here, like this, and open up the pores to the pork. You don't see this done anymore. It's a very old technique. and just rub it around the meat. Distilled vinegar. Don't wanna wet it, dump the whole thing on there, but you just wanna just put your hands in here and rub it around the meat. And as you're rubbing it, you'll feel the texture of the meat start to dry out. And that's what you're looking for. Just like that. And that's done. 
Now we're going to turn it back over and come in with our black pepper. Actually, we'll start first with our onion powder. A liberal amount. Now I'm not pulling off the membranes because you'll dry this meat out. And I'll just go up under this little piece. I trimmed that little piece there. And just rub it in. Very, very simple. This is where less is better. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my black pepper and I'm only doing one side. And like I said, no salt. Now when you're cooking on an offset and you add the salt, it just sucks all the moisture right out of the meat. And you'll get a lot more meat off your ribs if you salt them afterwards. So when they come off the cooker, that's when you'll salt them, if you even want salt. Because ribs taste excellent on an offset with no salt. A lot of people think they need to salt everything, but you really don't. Try your meat with no salt. You might be very surprised. All right, so we're gonna pull this one in now. Again with the vinegar. And just throw that vinegar away after it's done. Don't put it back on the bottle. That's it, just like that. Just using my hands just to dampen it. Flip it over, same thing on the other side. And you'll actually, like I said, you'll feel the texture of the meat just dry out. Very basic, simple way to do this. All right, so we're gonna go in with our onion powder. Nice little amount there. There's no salt in any of this stuff, so knock yourself out. Flip these over. This side gets done. Rub it in. And black pepper. That heavy gauge. This is what's going to bring on that beautiful flavor. And just adjust it to way you, how you want it. And this pepper you can just kind of pat in because once you put it on it'll roll off. So after you get it to where you want it, roll it around and pat it. So it sticks, roll it around, just pat it. Just sets it in there. And that's it. We're all done. I like to marinate these in the fridge overnight. And onto the cooker, there they go. Very basic. And you can almost see the vinegar that I put on here it just changed the texture of the meat. It changed the tone, the texture, even the color. You can see the, almost the color changed. And that's it. And if you use this recipe, you'll see why I put the vinegar on there. So we're cooking indirect. We're changing the way we cook for each grill that we cook on. So if you grill them, it's one way. They go on the pellet grill, it's another way. You cook it indirect with an offset cooker, it's another way. And you can't do one set every way, the same way. It's just not gonna work. So you have to adjust your cook 
and adjust everything for the cooker that you're cooking on and the meats that you're cooking. And that's it. We're gonna enter the fridge we go with this. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, this is what we're rolling with today. Custom built offset smoker. Let's show you around. So we got a nice handle that we can pull loose with. This grill weighs about 1,200 pounds. She's built like a tank. Let's show the inside. Nice three racks in here. Big size. They all slide out. This is an adjustable shelf. It's as close as back. Adjustable shelf. Nice temperature gauges on each door. We got double chimney stacks here. I got adjusters to adjust my flow on my outlet. This is a reverse flow cooker. Two double pipes and a nice big solid firebox here. Nice basket inside. And we got a beautiful door here. This lets my air in. I can open it up to let my air in. If I don't want to use that, I can use this. And this hooks up to my Guru. So I could just use an air intake here for very fine adjustments. This will open up to let the air in and close to not let it in. This is my fire setup. And I got some charcoal on the bottom. One piece of wood for now on the top. And that's it. All right, our fire's lit. I'm burning down some logs in here. We're gonna get it stable. Let it stabilize. Let it come up the tin and get our food on. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, it's time to put our food on. All right, we're cranking right now at about 275. I'm gonna put this on and then we're gonna jack it up. We're gonna jack it up to about 300. And we're gonna cook these fast and we're gonna cook them hot. Now, I put some loin backs on Just because I'm having some company come over. And I want to throw a couple of loin backs off. And there they are. All right. I'm going to close it up. Cook these fast. Cook them hot. So we're rolling about 300. We're going to get some color on them. We're going to mop them a little bit. We'll see you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, so we're about an hour and 15 minutes in cooking hot. We're running at 300. Let's show you the fire. There's our fire. Looking pretty good. About to throw another log on there. Now, let's check out the food. Now, I got this on top of the cooker, keeping it warm. That's our base, we're about to baste. Let's check out what we got going on. Look at the color on there. 
This is cooking fast and it's cooking hot. So, time to baste these. Now, I don't use sprays or spritzers. What I do is old school. I just go right on top. Get that in there like that. And just go right on top. Now you can hear that from cooking hot. We're running these ribs about 300. I'm gonna get a little bit more color on them. And we're gonna we're gonna wrap them and get them back on here. There we go. Now, I have Tudor plates, which is, they're metal plates, underneath the bottom of here, and what they'll do is bounce the drippings off the cooker. They'll bounce the drippings off the cooker, you can see this. Off the cooker, back onto the meat. All right, so we're gonna get this closed up, get it stable, and that's gonna be that. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, so our ribs are cooking away back there, and uh, we're gonna show you just a very fast pork and beans. So over here, I have my leftover ham, the ham video that I just did. So we'll leave a link in the description if uh, you wanna see that ham video. And I have got pinto beans. Now I cook some pinto beans down, brown sugar, onions, Worcestershire sauce, little olive oil, homemade barbecue sauce, jalapeno. Let's get this going. First thing we're gonna do, get our stove lit. We're gonna get some medium heat going on. Put our gas siren on. Start off with a little olive oil. in there and then we're going to put our onion now nothing's exact here this is about a half an onion so I'm trying to feel it out and see how much onion I need in here to bean ratio and I like a lot of onions so that's where I'm going with it right there and while that's heating up we're going to get our pork and our beans in. So let's get our pork in here. And this is a real pork and bean. This is not the stuff you buy in a can. This is all the bits of the ham, all the outside skin like this. Outside bits of the skin that I got in. And some ham. And now we're going to get our, our beans in. These are cooked down. There's no salt. There's no spices in there at all. Jalapenos. Put those in there. Worcestershire sauce. Lean parents. And I'm going to see how my onion ratio is now. 
because I think I'm going to put the rest of the onions in because I like onions. So I'm going to add my onions just a little bit more. Brown sugar. Give that a stir. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to need a little water in here, but so far we're looking good. And I might just add just a touch of liquid in here. That's about it. Followed by barbecue sauce. Homemade. I don't use it, but I do make it for my guests. Can't give out the recipe for that. Sorry, folks. But one day, you might see it in a bottle. Okay. Let's give this a stir. Now, one thing I left out is the mustard. So, right after I put this lid on, let it cook down for a little bit, we're going to add mustard. Just regular household mustard. Nothing crazy. I like dry mustard, but we're just using a standard mustard today. What's that? We're going to let this cook down. Nothing's out of a can. And that's a very fast pork and beans. And it's an excellent way to use your ham that's left over from the holidays. Or just ham in general that's left over. Doesn't necessarily even have to be from the holiday time. So if you cook anything like I cooked, the, uh, the ham, it's a fresh ham picnic, you can get down to the end of the bone, and normally I put the entire bone right in there. That's it. So we're going to let this cook down, put it on low, get back to our ribs, and we'll see you in just a second here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, it's time to wrap these. Now, I hit this with a little hard smoke coming to the end. You can see it coming out of the stacks. I just kind of gassed it up a bit with a piece of wood. And we're gonna, we're gonna wrap these because we got nice color. And it looks like the bottom one could use a little bit more wrapping time. So we won't wrap that, but the spare ribs we're going to start to get these and wrap them up. All you need. Get these back on the top rack. Now I'll put the gloves on because I'm up on a hot rack. Pull them out. Get them in there. Get back. Get our next rack going on. Right over to there. Now, I try to make some a little darker, some a little lighter. Because when you wrap them, and you unwrap them, sometimes you never know what you're going to get. But most
most of the time, they're spot on. And some people I know, they like dark ribs. All right. I'm gonna pull this back out. Get them back on. Now, if you can see, this grill cooks very even, so it doesn't matter where I put it. As you can see, if you look down on the floor here, I'm working with a board down on the floor, a cardboard. And I put that down there to stop any drippings from wrapping ribs. The cardboard box, I keep a bunch of them. So, it's always a good thing to put something down. These are loins. I'm not happy with the color. So what I'll do is I'll leave them and let them go a bit longer before I wrap them. And I'll probably wind up pulling the spare ribs first, but these are a lot thicker of a beast. So maybe I'll just put them back down the bottom and let the bottom do all the work. A little bit hotter down there. Not much, but just a little bit hotter. All right, let's get this wrapped up. Door is closed and temperature stabilized to get. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, let's check on our beads. They're cooking down nicely. Now, it's time to add the mustard. This is how much. See, this is just regular cheap yellow mustard. And we're just going to put about that much in. Just a couple of squeezes. Just a drop. You don't need much. I think I'll go in with just a little bit more. Like I said, nothing's exact. Feel it out, taste it, see how you like it. Some people might want more sugar, less sugar. And I didn't add salt to this at all because our pork had the salt in it. So if you want to add salt, feel free. All right, that's it. We're gonna let this go just a little bit longer. Total cook time for this is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Feel it out, what you have it here. If you don't have the salt pork in there or the pork at all, you could use salt pork, you could use uh, hot dogs, bacon. Bacon works excellent. You could do the same thing with bacon. All right. Here we go. We'll pull this and we'll see you inside. Our beans are done. Our ribs are ready to come off. Now, I decided not to wrap the loins because they don't need it. They're loin ribs. So I'm not going to wrap these. And I think I'm going to let them go a little bit longer with my corn, but I am going to pull my spare ribs. Oh. On even load. There we go. Now these have the right bin and they're coming off. I can feel them through the package. And I'm gonna let the loins go just a little bit longer with the corn. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, 
We're here. We're on the chopping block. Let's see what we got. So these are our loin ribs. And these are our spares. I let them rest for about, see that? The bone's falling right out of them. I let them rest for about 20 minutes. Now, I didn't wrap the loin ribs until I brought them in the house. And when I brought them in, I didn't salt them because I don't like salt on my ribs. So, let's give this a shot. I'm gonna cut these from the back. Now, my best ribs, I feel, out of all ribs being cooked, I like my ribs direct. Direct heat. For me, is always a favorite. So, I slice from the back like this, and I'm just gonna cut the whole rack up. Now, I use cherry wood in here and reverse flow. So, it gives a nice red tint to these ribs. Let's get them around. Let's see what we got. There you have it. Look at that. Nice little smoke ring on the top. And let's give that a try. Now first, I'm just gonna show you how tender these are. That they just pull right from the bone. You can pull that with your hand. You can even take a piece off with your hand. We're gonna get a little bite in there. Pulls right away from the bone. That's what you want. All right. Let's get this off to the side. Let's move these over. And let's see how our loin ribs came out. Let's give these guys a try. Now, like I said, I didn't wrap these until I got them in. Because I usually don't wrap my ribs. But for the sake of shooting a video, I'm showing you guys how to do wrap ribs. Always cut from the back. Takes no time to cut these. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's finish cutting. Got my nice duck there. Bring this around this way so I can find my bone. And just finish through. And this one I'll just leave that way. Nice big loin rib. Look at that. Now the offsets, they don't give the smoke ring like going direct. You can hit them with a lot more smoke, but they might be over smoky. And you saw my fire, I burn pretty clear most of the time. And if you want more of a smoke ring, you either got to cook them a lot longer and lower and give them more smoke or you got to dirt, dirty up the smoke a little bit more. Throw a couple more logs in there. But you might get a bitterness if you give them too much hard smoke. So let's pick a rib. Let's go with that one. As you can see that falls right off just like that. And I'm going to bite it. Look at that. Cook right down to the bone. All right. 
We're gonna plate this up right now and slide this off to the side. I'm gonna show you a beautiful barbecue plate. We got a nice plate here. As you saw the ears of corn on here. So let's get our corn on here. Just like that. That little husk hair off of there. And we're going to go in with a couple of our spear ribs. In here. Followed by a couple of our loin ribs in here. There it is. Now, we can't forget our, our pork and beans now. So, let's get our pork and beans. Take a look at those. I'm gonna give those a stir. Now you can see all that nice pork fat. And this is what happens when you do it the real way and not out of a can. That's real pork and beans. And you can adjust the salt, the sugar, to your liking. So you saw how quick I did that. That was my recipe. Make it yours. There you have it. So here we are. That is corn on the cob, ribs, pork and beans, southern style. There you go. All right, we're gonna see you right back here in a second. Let's get this straightened up and we'll see you back here soon. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, and there you have it. Hot and fast ribs on an offset cooker with cherry wood. And if you like this video and more videos that are about to come, hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little bell to get all the videos first. That's way you get them first. Thank you for joining us. And uh, with no further ado, I gotta, uh, gotta find my little pit master's taste here.